Officer Jones, Houston Police Department, Office of Community Affairs, and we're here today celebrating Black History Month. And what better way to do that is in the heart of the historic Freedmanstown. That's right, Freedmanstown Historic District. Today we're going to be talking about some opportunities to understand history and also the connection with the police and community. Community and police got to come together, one community of love. Hi, welcome to Historic Freemanstown. My name is Priscilla T. Graham, and today you're gonna get the experience of a lifetime. We're out here on the historic bricks that are over 100 years old, and we're in the body of living history. So welcome, and I would like to take you on this fantastic voyage with us today, so stick around. We're standing in front of the historic RBH Yates Rutherford Museum which was once the house of RBH Yates. And you will see a picture of what the house looked like before and what it looks like now. This house was restored with 80% of the original structure. And if you've seen the picture that's sitting over there, it really was in bad shape. This is one of the houses that you would see in the green book. It has two front doors. And actually, if you, if you look, this is the very first front door where you can see where the family used one door and then the visitors used other doors. Cause as you know, African-Americans could not stay downtown in facilities that were meant for whites. They would come into the community, find a facility with two front doors and that's where they could stay. If you look up at the ceiling, it's blue. It's blue because wasps think that it's the sky. And that's why this particular building is blue. And so this is a printing museum. If you ever get a chance to go inside of it, it's a great tour. Right now we're looking at some property that just looks like a vacant lot, but it's a very historical lot and it's right next to the RBH Yates Printing Museum. This property was bought by Reverend Jack Yates in 1869 and the big significance about this property is that guess what, the Yates family still own this property. How many people do you know that family purchased property in 1869 that still own their property? Now we're standing in the heart of Freemanstown. We're, this right here is on the corner. This is the J. Vance Lewis house. J. Vance Lewis was a lawyer here in historic Freemanstown, and he wrote this book, Out of the Ditch, that was published in 1908 about coming out of slavery. So he was born a slave. And he was actually he was born on December the 25th. He was born on Christmas. He was born a slave. He was married to Pauline Gray, which was a teacher here in historic Freemanstown. And the property actually was given to them by Isabel Sims. And if we keep walking a little bit, we'll see the little house that Isabel Sims actually lived in, which was her house. She couldn't buy property. So Reverend Jack Yates purchased the property for her because her husband had just died right before they was purchasing the property. And so he purchased it for her. She took her deeds and all her stuff and Reverend Jack Yates kept that for many, many years until he died. And when he died, his family gave her her deeds back because he paid her taxes and everything. She gave him the money to pay the taxes and everything. But this is the Isabel Sims house. And Pauline Gray's mother lived with her in this house until she died. And this is the J. Vance Lewis house. It's a beautiful house. It's under renovation right now. The Yates Museum is renovating it. And it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. It's a, actually, Sammy Davis Jr. once stayed in this house. And this was one of the houses also with the two front doors where you could stay if you came to the community. Now we are at the crossroads of Wilson and West Dallas. West Dallas used to be named St. Philippi. And we have a sea of apartments that have replaced the wall that was connecting between Allen Parkway Village and Freemanstown. That's what is the divider. And now it's, you can actually see a peak in between there. So in 1917, the Camp Logan riots actually happened here in historic Houston. And it started right here in this area. And it started with a lady named Miss Timmons. She had five kids and the police officer came in and brutalized her and pulled her out in the community. And a soldier came up and asked, could he take her? And they beat, brutally beat the soldier. And then the MP soldier came and they actually, his name was Corporal Baltimore. They actually brutalized him and shot at him and everything. He ran through the community to seek safety and refuge. But this is the area right here. And then that night, the soldiers, 156 soldiers that were stationed at Camp Logan, marched on the city to come and get the police that had actually brutalized 
Corporal Baltimore and the other soldier. This area right here, Wilson and West Dallas, actually is a place where police officers, soldiers, and people and civilians actually got killed right here at this crossroads. I think it was five people that actually got killed, but I'll verify that, that number before I just say that that was the number. But right here at this crossroads is very significant. So we have to change the narrative. We have to change the way people think about people. And African-Americans are worthy. They're people, we're humans. And their hate is real. And we have to learn how to love each other. And this is an opportunity to bridge that gap between Houston Police Department and the community because they've had a bad history in this particular community of harassment and everything else. So now's the time that we can actually start mending those and healing those feelings amongst all. Hey, now we're at the Jewish Cemetery. This was once the only place that Jewish people could be buried. I know you see the mausoleum over there as you're looking at the city skyscraper. That was built by Joseph Finger, and he's actually laid to rest here in that mausoleum also. So this has the most beautiful skyline than any skyline I've seen in the city, but it's a cemetery, and it's still an active cemetery also. Now we're on the historic brick streets and it runs parallel to the Jewish cemetery. And these brick streets are on Wilson Street and part of, this is the only part that's still left. It's like seven tenths of a mile of brick streets that's left in the community. And you can actually see the rails that's still running inside the road to that, where the rail actually ran. And we're coming upon the area where Ms. Doris Ellis laid down in the brick streets in order to help save the brick streets where they weren't removed and so they removed 45 bricks from the street and Miss Ellis, just enough for her to lay down in. And then Keith Wade asked her, would she get up? And she got up and that started the march for saving the brick streets in 2014, 2015 timeframe. And we actually went to court in order to save these brick streets also. And on Martin Luther King Day, 2015, the construction company actually came back to remove these bricks again. The community gathered and just enough time for Ms. Doris and others to get a temporary restraint in order to keep them from removing the brick streets. And they did that on MLK Day, January the 20th, 2015. And so that's where we are. And we're going to go to the crossroads. You'll see a lot of new development that's in the area. It's new and old mixed together. The skyline is everywhere. So we're in the center of Freemanstown at the historic Brick Streets, and we're right in the middle. This is the place where folklore says this is the crossroads between our world and the spiritual world. So this is the most spiritual place within the community, or I say even in Houston because it still exists. And so the bricks are designed where they are in triangles. It goes northwest, east, and south. That's why you was just looking at the middle. The middle is where the triangles begin and they branch out to your sides. And if you look right here to your left, you will see that it has a base where the bricks go straight across. It makes a base. Now, if you think about the pyramids, the pyramids are four triangles, four triangles with the pyramids. And at the bottom, it has a base. So with the pyramids, if you took the center of this brick streets and pulled it, if you took the center right here and pulled it up all the way to where they touch each other, it would be a pyramid. This is their pyramid. They couldn't build it tall, but they built it flat. And that's what the significance of this is. If you take it up, it will no longer have the significance of the people who put it down here because it connects to where they came from, their place. Actually, if you really think about it, you can see it, that it looks just like the pyramids. How did they do it? I don't know, but it's actually magnificent. Kings and queens stayed on these streets. Kings and queens that was captured from Africa that became freedmen actually lived in these different blocks. No joke. Yes, right now we're at a historical banner that has all the pictures of all the preachers that are still here in Freemanstown, but it actually has some historical elements in it also. So it reflects the time, it reflects the moment in time period of the community. As you see, these are some of the people, what actually what downtown used to look like Freemanstown. 
at the very end. This is the Allen Building actually right here. And then it has some of the time, historical time periods of our time. Remember the bridges being escorted when they did integration, that she had to go to school. And then we have right here, the civil rights movement. And you see women leading this charge. And over here, this is Miss Chen. Miss Chen was very involved with the Allen Parkway when it was fighting to save Allen Parkway. Miss Woods actually had a kindergarten here for many, many years. And this is my absolute, absolute favorite. This is, this is William Cathy. She actually fought in the Civil War. And this is actually a picture of her that someone found. And we actually got to see what she really looked like. And this is Miss Olame House. We was just by her house just a while ago, a little bit ago, when we was talking to Miss Gladys. And these are the men from the, ch the Negro Chamber that was part, they were housed inside the Pilgrim Building. And so just a lot of people celebrating their lives up here just to pay homage to people that was fighting in the community or that lived in the community. And this is one of my favorites because this is Reverend Jack Yates. We saw the property, we talked about his property, 1869, that he purchased that property, that's him. His original house is at the Heritage Society that's downtown. So you can go in and actually do tours of that. He actually found this church, which is Bethel. Ned, Reverend Ned Pullum took over the church after Reverend Yates died. And this is Reverend Ned Pullum and Emma Pullum, and this is their house. This is their house that we're standing in front of. And this is Reverend, this is J. Vance Lewis. J. Vance Lewis was the lawyer house that we showed you on the corner. And this is Pauline Gray, and that's their home. And actually he was a medical doctor also. He wasn't just a lawyer, but he was actually a medical doctor too. And they had J. Vance Court in his house. And this is the newspaper article stating about that the people were free. That's actually the newspaper article for Order, for order 3. Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church is the second oldest church in the community, in this part of the community. And that's St. James, and we did see St. James earlier. And this is Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, which is on Clay, which is downtown. This is the only thing that's left that was part of Freeman's Town is downtown. And so we just want to pay homage to those people. And this is, Fedrick, Dr. Fedrick's delights. He actually was pastor of this church also for over 20 years. But we just want to, and we always put the brick streets in some type of way that you can see the brick streets. Okay, and we're gonna move down here to this particular po poster. And actually this is when we were down with the Heritage Society sponsored the 100 years of 2000 women African-American women from Freeman's Town that participated in the women's suffrage movement, meaning they voted. They voted in 1921. And this is one of Reverend Jack Yates' descendants. Remember we said the family still owned the property. And this is one of um, Franklin, Franklin Beauty Shop descendants. He's fourth generation. He owns it now. He's the fourth generation owning it. And these are some of the women from Freeman's Town that actually voted. This little lady right here her family owned the store that African-Americans could vote at. And this is a picture of the store. And she held it up for me for me to see it. And these are a lot of descendants from Jack Yates, a lot of people that was there. And we just cannot forget that HPD was there. Their women was in full force. They were there for security, but actually they were so much a part of what was going on also. It was just important to have them to be part of it. And so that just seals the deal with that. And these are just some of the other people that have been fighting with us over the years to save the community. And this is Miss Sissy Farenthal. She's been active with Freeman's Town so long she passed, but she was very active and she, she's a lawyer and she went to court with them so, so many times. Sophronia Thompson, I know you see her. She actually grew up out here. She's one of your state representatives. And then just some of the other people, just all over. And same thing, we're here. This is Ms. Gladys' house that we was just talking about. And these are some of the community members. This is actually when we went to court and we was on the stairs that day when they actually told us we was going to um, another level of court. <laughs> and just, you can just kind of see. And this is Reverend Samuel Smith over here. He's been serving the community for over 57 years. So we want to pay homage to him. He's still, he's 91 years old now. He's still preaching. He's still the pastor of his church. And, um, but we want to pay homage to him. And this is Miss, um, this is Yates Museum. Some of the things that they've done, they're heavily into education. They have partnerships with Prairie View a and TSU. Um, actually have classes that long started taught out of one of the buildings. And so this is Miss Catherine Roberts. 
And so if you ask again, Ms. Catherine Roberts actually started Yates Museum with Ms. Ollie McAuliffe over 25 years ago. And so this is the Brick Streets again. You can kind of see who's sitting down there. They're actually sitting down there singing and chanting. And just kind of see, and this is some of the wallpaper that came out of, out of the houses that they've, they've kept and preserved. You see, she has to have gloves on to keep the walls from her fingers getting on it. But that's some of the wallpaper. And you see, we have kids. We, they, they, we bring them with us. They're part of the movement also. So that's pretty much what this is about. And we had more that's here, but with the weather, it's been down. This has been up since June. Okay, so what I did not tell you today is that Officer Josephine Jones has history down here too. She used to work with the YMCA and she actually ran programs over at Gregory Lincoln Education Center and at Allen Parkway. It's just that during that time period, we just actually didn't know where we were and how historical the area is. This is Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. This is the second oldest church within the community. And so if we walk down a little bit, we'll see the parsonage actually where the pastor used to live, which is right there at the tail end of it. This is the actual place within the facility that the pastor actually used to stay. But now it just houses like your AC units and different things like that. But all the churches actually had places where the pastors actually stayed. And that's just part of history that no longer exists in churches anymore. Okay, now we're at the historic Gregory School, which is the African-American library at the Gregory School. This is the front side of the school where you enter in the library side and it houses all different types of historical black pictures. They do exhibits, all type of different things. And they have a gallery that you can go in of, that portrays African-Americans across Houston. It's worth it. Now they're just doing self-guided tours. They're not doing in-person tours, they're doing self-guided tours. So you can just come by the library during the time that they open and take a self-guided tour. Now we're looking at three houses that's side by side. One that's a contributing house, that's older during a certain time period. Then you have houses that have been built within the last 20 years. And now you have that big house, the big gray one, is something that's been built in the 2000s. So you have three different time periods side by side. And that's the big thing. And you see gentrification at its finest right here. Actually, we're now at the corner of what we have two, uh, two other pieces of Yates property, which is the barber shop, the historical barber shop in this part of the UNESCO. And then we have the Nixon house. Nixon was believed to be the first blacksmith here in, in Freemanstown. So his family stayed there for over 35 years. They rented the house. They did not own it. They rented the house for a very long time. So this is the historical barber shop. It's one of Yates properties and it actually is part of UNESCO slave route also. It's received a certification. And this house was used for a barber shop and a beauty shop. However, I met one of the descendants of a person that stayed here and she said her aunt used to stay here. And it was just, a, it's just a really small room. It's not even really that big. It's a small room, very, very tiny. And this lady stayed here for a very long time. She said she had a mattress, she had something to cook on and not much of anything else. But if you go inside it, you'll see how small it is. And actually people, they say have lived in this house before. Now we're at the historical Gregory School. And as you can see, the beautiful brick stone here, this is the original structure. You'll see the original name on here. This building was built in 1926. Actually, Gregory School was started in 1869 in a different location by private citizens. And then when the Freedom's Bureau came, they turned the land over to the Freedom's Bureau in 1869. And after they put a clause inside that if the government no longer owned the property, that property would revert back to them so they would be able to sell it. And then they moved the school here. This used to be three units and two of them been torn down and this is the only structure that's remaining. Welcome back. I hope that you've enjoyed this tour with us. It's been my pleasure of sharing Historic Freemantown with you again. And I hope that you get a chance to follow us. For more information, follow me at PriscillaTGram.com. And actually, before we close, close, this is the historical Pullum House, which is one of the most significant houses in the community, built in 1897 by Reverend Ned Pullum and Emma Pullum. And he owned a brickyard here in Freemantown. So, Hey, make sure you tune in to learn more about what's going on in Free Historic Freemantown.